Hi and welcome back to another video. I'm Tim and thanks for watching my channel. I've been asked by one or two people if I could explain how to create port forward rules on the Unify network. So in this video I'm going to explain how to open ports to do port forwarding and also how to set up a dynamic DNS account and also how to forward the ports onto a Synology NAS to enable web access to the control panel remotely as an example. So let's get started. So as you can see on my screen at the moment, I have accessed the No IP website, which is www.noip.com. And here we are going to set up a dynamic DNS account so that we can access our device remotely. So firstly, what you need to do is scroll down to the bottom of the web page where it says create your free host name now. So in the host name box, I'm going to enter 10 gig Tim. And then in the second box, you will see it's got .hop2.org. So for example, my dynamic DNS name would be 10 gigtimhop2org So let's click on sign up. Here we need to enter an email address and password to create an account. And this is a free account, by the way. With a free account, you have to confirm your dynamic DNS account every 30 days to keep it active. But you can obviously uh, have a paid for account, which uh, then would remove the option to have to confirm the DNS account every 30 days. So in this example, I'm just creating a free account. So in the email box, you need to enter your email address. So I have entered that and also a password. Please use a secure password, by the way. Then we need to tick the terms of service and privacy policy by checking this box and then email opt-in. You can unlock exclusive deals and cutting edge insights. Join the no IP inner circle now. I will leave that unticked as I don't want that. And then I'm going to select free sign up. Now it's asking me to uh, check my email where they've sent a link to confirm the account. So I'll just uh, access my email temporarily and uh, confirm the account. I've confirmed the account. I should be able to uh, sign in. So I've now signed into my account and I'm now just entering uh, personal information. So once you have finished setting up your account and entered your personal information on your no IP account, you can then go to your dashboard, as you will see I've done here. As you will see at the top, there's an exclamation mark and a number one, and it's saying host names without recent dynamic updates. So this is where your no IP dynamic DNS account cannot connect to your home network, meaning that it cannot access your Unify router on your network. So in order to uh, get dynamic updates with your IP address, for example, when it changes, you need to enter some settings on your Unify network controller. So I'm now going into my Unify network. As you'll see, I've logged in already and I'm on the Unify network dashboard. Now to enable the no IP account to access your Unify network, specifically your router, and in this case I'm using a UDM Pro, you need to first click on the settings, which is the gear or cog icon at the left hand side, which you'll see I'm hovering over now. Then from the screen, you will be presented with your Wi-Fi account details. You need to click on internet from the left hand side. Then from the internet screen, you will see that there's a primary one connection and a secondary one connection. 
Now what you need to do is you need to click on the one connection that you want to use for your dynamic DNS account. So in this case, I'm clicking primary one one. Then once you are clicked on that, you will be presented with the primary one one account details. Now, if you move down to your details, you will see that there's dynamic DNS, which I'm hovering over now. And you need to click on create new dynamic DNS. Then from the pop-up window that appears that says dynamic DNS, you need to select the service from the drop-down list. And in this case, we're using no IP. So you need to select no IP as the service, which you can see I've done here. Then you need to enter your host name. Now this is the host name that you created on your no IP account. And in this case, it was 10 gig tim dot hop to dot org. So this is the host name that you'll type in a web browser anywhere from any location to access your home network. Then in the username box, you need to enter your username that you've created on your no IP account. And then in the next box, you need to enter the password that you created on your dynamic DNS account on the no IP website. Then in the server box, you need to enter DYN update as in dyne update dot no hyphen IP dot com. So to confirm, you should be entering in the server box dyn update dot no hyphen IP dot com as you will see I've done on the screen at the moment. Then when you have done that, you can click the create button. This has then created a dynamic DNS account so that your dynamic DNS account on the no IP website can talk to or ping your dynamic DNS account details set up on your Unify network. So if you then go back to your my no IP account and you can you can click on host names without recent dynamic updates you should then see that it will bring you to the host name screen and your host name should be shown and also with the last update so in that under the last update you should have the date and the time that the last update occurred then in the ip target you should see your public IP address. So now that you have entered the dynamic DNS details in your Unify network on your primary 1.1, you then need to forward the ports so that you can access, in this example, a Synology NAS. However, there are various devices that you might need to access and you would have to go onto the help page of your device manufacturer to find out how to open ports and what port numbers you need to open. But in this example, I'm going to be connecting to a Synology NAS. It will be the control panel login page for the Synology NAS. So under firewall and security from the left hand side, you need to select that. Then from the firewall and security screen, you need to scroll down to port forwarding and select on create entry. Under the name, you need to give it a name that you will remember what it's for. So in this example, I'm going to call it port forwarding to Synology DS1621 plus. And under forward rule, this should be ticked for enable and the interface is by default selected as one. If you are using one two link to your no IP account, 
then you would select one, two. In this case, my no IP account is linked to one, one. So I will select one under interface. And then from, we will select any. And then under the port, we need to enter 5,000 hyphen 5001. Then when you have entered the port number 5000 hyphen 5001, you need to select update port forward. Then under forward IP, you need to enter a static IP address. So under the forward IP, you need to enter the IP address of your Synology NAS that you will be accessing. So in this case, my static IP address is 192.168.1.5. And this is the static IP address allocated to my Synology NAS. I would recommend that you access your Synology NAS locally and make sure that you set it to have a static IP address rather than a dynamic IP address or a DHCP enabled IP address as it could cause problems accessing your Synology NAS if the IP address changes, for example. So under the forward IP, I'm entering the static IP address of my Synology NAS. And then under forward port, you will see that there's already port 5000 hyphen 5001 already entered. This is because the Unify network interface has copied and pasted automatically the port numbers from port as you'll see I'm hovering over here and it's copied them automatically into forward port and then under protocol you will see that it's selected as both you need to select the arrow and the drop down list that appears you need to select TCP then once you have entered TCP under protocol, you can leave logging box disabled so that can be unticked. Then you need to select apply changes. Then you will see that it's taken you back to the firewall and security screen. And under firewall rules, you should be selected by default as internet. And it should have automatically created a new rule in this case, the rule index is 3005 and the action is accept. The protocol is TCP and the type is internet in. And you'll see that it's given it a description of port forward allow and in brackets port forwarding to Synology NAS. This has been created automatically for you as you have just entered the port forward rule. So it's already created the rule for you for the firewall rules. So now you should be able to access your Synology NAS remotely via any web interface. So now that we've entered those details and set up our no IP account and port forwarded via the port forward rule we've just created, I'm going to show you an example of how to test this. So as you'll see on screen at the moment, I'm using my mobile smartphone to test the connection. So what we need to do is enable mobile data, which you can see I've just done at the moment. Please do not test this via a Wi-Fi connection that your home network is connected to, otherwise you are only going to test it with local access and not remote access. So you'd need to enable mobile data. Then you need to open up a web page and in the search, you need to type in your dynamic host name that you've created on the no IP account. So in this case, it will be HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash and then your dynamic host name that you've configured on your no IP account. In this case, it is 10 gig tim dot hop 2 dot org. And then a colon 
and then you need to enter the port number which is the HTTPS port number that we've opened up on our UDM Pro with the port forward rule that we created. So in this case it would be 5001 which is the default HTTPS port number. So once you've entered the port number you can then click the enter key to load the web page and you should then be presented with your Synology NAS sign-in page where you can access your Synology NAS control panel and files and applications running on your NAS and so on. This confirms that you have remote access enabled and working to your Synology NAS and it confirms that the port forward rules are working correctly that we've created on our Unify network controller. I hope you liked this video. Thank you for watching. And this video was actually requested by one of my channel supporters. So if you would like me to create a video specific to what you think you need, then please do leave a comment. I'll certainly look into creating a video to help you out. If you do leave a comment, please do hit the subscribe button. It will help the channel out greatly. Thanks for watching and take care and keep subscribing. Thanks again. Bye for now.